Good morning everybody and uh, this is another video uh, related to the database project that we started a while back. In this video I'll show you how we do the database login instead of just simple login and we go to a database check the user come back with the result okay before we do this we, I'll, we let's continue this menu uh, options and then do the logout so we did the login let's do the logout and the logout basically we do the same thing that we do when we initialize the form so here's what we did and here's what happens when we start the application so basically I will do the same thing I'm gonna do control copy and then paste it in here so now it, when you run it you'll see that if I log in okay uh, right now we don't have the code to do anything but they're enabled right the login enabled the log out this I mean the login disabled the log out enabled and the forms are showing but when I do log out they're gone okay all right so we're done with the we're done with the log out and the login now we need to put the code actually for the login if we go to the login form here and go to the design we have two fields we have text text id and user id and a password now in the database we have a table called user table do you see that what's in that user table if you look at it we have three fields user id password and the role we double click on the login here is what we've done so far right it doesn't matter what you type you just say re return okay all right the code that i want you to copy from the g drive let me pause this for a minute and i'll let you copy it okay so i copied the code i want to paste it into my project now we have only one line here remove this line because we we'll, it's used in the code that i already have so delete this and then let's say control v the one that you just copied okay and i'll explain what these parts mean before we start because we're accessing the database manually not using the wizards we have to include this package which includes says using system dot data OLEDB this allow me to access the classes that resides in this package which allow me access the database okay so I need this included above in my for in my uh, the top of the class so using system dot data dot OLEDB what is OLEDB it is a set of classes that allow us to interact with the database then we go to the login button first what do I have I have the connection string so I define a string this string is called connection string now what is this connection string remember when we were creating the database previously and I told you we created this database and it has it has characteristics and we had to to tell it what driver we use where it is saved and all of that watch if you click on this and then click on configure data source I actually I don't need to do that just go to the go to the solution explorer watch everybody you go to solution explorer you have one called app.config application.config if you double click on that you'll see the driver this is my connection string you see the driver that I'll be using it's called oh, uh, provider Microsoft blah 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 all of these things what you need to do you can copy it from here or so basically you will copy the whole thing from here you just copy the whole thing and then remove the codes you cannot use the codes I'll show you in a minute what we do or you can go from references references or not references uh, properties and then you have something called settings you double click on settings and here is your driver you see that so I just can simply I can copy it from here or from there all right either from here or from there once we copy it 
let me copy it from there to show you what, what you have to do. Once you copy it, I'll copy the whole thing so you, you'll understand. So here I'm going to copy all of this. Control copy. And then I go to my uh, login application. And I have something called connection string here. What I'll do, I'll just paste it here. Okay. So instead of what I have, you will have, depending on your driver, you will paste it in here. Okay. But I have a problem here. First of all, I don't have these codes. So I want to get rid of these codes. So it just say customer MDB. And this code here also remove this code. Okay. And there's actually semicolon. So remove the semicolon and the code. So it looks like this only. See the, the path of your database. Still I have a problem here because it says I don't know what these, this slash D in C sharp is an escape character. Escape character is like it can be slash N something, slash T something uh, else, right? But you don't have something called slash D. So if you want to put a slash in your path because your drive has slashes, what do you do? Watch. You just put another slash in front of it and another slash in front of it and another one here now it knows that okay you have two slashes each two slashes will be will be replaced by one so your code is happy and that is based in based on your connection string in my case this is my connection string in your case you'll have to do the same thing that you have in the connection string okay let me pause it for a minute all right, so we've done, this, is, this step is very critical. Now there is a way to get the connection string from those configuration files, but I'm not gonna talk about, we're just gonna skip it. I wanna show you how you do it manually, okay? Now here, we're done with the connection string. Again, the connection string is a critical piece of your connection because it tells your application how and where to connect to the database, okay? The next thing we need is a connection. So I have something called OLE DB connection. It's a class and then we have an object called con. What is that needed for? This is needed for actually making the connection to your database, okay? Okay. Maybe I should write connect. Okay, so we have the connection. We have the connection string. We have the connection. The last thing we have is something called command. A command is like a query. Okay, so this is like the query that we want to execute in the database. Okay, so the command is like my query. Okay. All right. So we define the connection string. Here I create my connection using the connection string, right? Here is my connection string that I did. And then I try to open the connection. Now, if you have something wrong, you will get an exception. So to handle the exception, you can do what? Either try and catch, so you tell the user there's a problem when you try to connect. So I'm gonna put a try and catch here. This was not in your code. So I'm going to say try to do the following. Okay. So first I'll try to connect to the database. Then I open my connection. Next is that I define my query. Here is my command and I'm creating the command and I'm pass I'm creating the query basically sending what is this have you noticed what is this? This is an SQL command. Have you seen this before? Have you seen the question marks before? When we were doing the query builder, remember when we say filter by, and then we said equal question mark, these are parameters to your query, right? So I say select star from the table, user table, where user ID equal to what? Question mark, and password equal question mark. 
this question mark will be replaced by parameters later on. And then I'll tell it that the connection that I am connecting to. Next, I need to create my parameters. Now, if you don't have parameters, if, you, if your query just retrieves everything without parameters, you don't need the following steps. But because I need to send parameters, I need the following steps. Okay, so you say, all I need, here's I need to create two parameters for the password and for the ID and the username. Next, I create my, I define them and I create them. So the first parameter is called user ID. And where do we get the value from? So I'm creating the parameters and assigning the value from the text field. Remember, I have two text fields. One of them is called TXT ID and then TXT password. If you go to the design, notice those are the two fields. TXT ID and TXT password. So I am creating the parameters and putting values in these parameters. The first value, the user ID will have the, the TXT ID value and the other one, P, the TXT text value. All right, after I define my parameters, I add them to my query. Remember, this is a command that we created. It's called command, right? It's called, uh, I think we're missing a bracket, but we have a command here, right? Because I put the try without the catch. That's why we got an error. Anyway, I'll fix it later. So we have a command. This command have this question mark. Now I tell it add the following command parameters to my command. If I have three question mark, I will have three add parameters. If I have one, I have only one parameter. But because we have two, we need to add two parameters to my command. Next, I execute the query. So the command is called command.execute reader. This will execute the query that you just built and will put the result back in something called OLE database, data reader. Okay? This is like your result set, the result of the query. And because it is a table, it comes in something called reader. You can have multiple rows, a single row, or no rows at all. Okay? Now I need to check my result. Did I have actually a hit in my database? Did I get a command in my database? I say if reader.read, I'm reading from the database because I will get one record only, right? If you have multiple records, then you have to read, you have to read many times. You put it in a loop. You keep uh, reading records. But I say if I hit a read, if I say reader that read equal to true, that means I found a hit in the database. And if I find a hit in the database, I return back OK to that form. Remember? I return back OK to the main form so they know which menu option they can set. Finally, if this was not OK, what do I do? Show message box invalid user ID and a password. Now there are many places that we can have an exception. The first place that we can have an exception is when we try to open the connection. So that's possible exception there. Then when we even try to add these parameters, you can have an exception. And when you try to execute the query, you might have an exception because you have the wrong syntax of the database of the query. So we have many places that we can have an exception. So what do I need to do in here? I need close this and say catch. Remember the exception? Exception. And then I'm just going to call it, I'm going to look for general exception, any type of exception. And if we get an exception, I should say error connecting to the database. Some message to the user saying you got a problem, right? And then we should say message box. Control copy, control V, error connecting. The users would not know what is error to the database mean, but for us it's important. Okay? And then you can write the exception, error connecting to the database. Okay? 
And if you want to print out the error, so you can just say cancel that right line. The exception itself. So we know what is the error about. Okay. All right. So that is really the login process. Okay. The pieces that are needed are the string, the connection string, a connection, a command. Those are the pieces that are needed for your database. The connection string is a critical piece. You need to make sure that you, got, you copy that from the config file or you can retrieve it from the config file also. In addition to that, after you set up your process, you start first connecting to the database then you create your command in this case this command receive parameters that's why we have these question marks if we have parameters we want to make sure that we pass these parameters to the database to the command we add them to the command these pieces and then finally when the command is ready i execute the command called execute reader the result comes back to me in a call something called ola oledb data reader and the reader, when we try to read, if we read successfully, it means that we're okay. If we could not read, means that we don't have, the username is invalid. Now notice, I don't return anything back from here. So I, did, I give the user many tries as they want to get into the database, into the application. But later on, I'll show you, in the next video, I'll show you how we add logic to prevent them after three application and kick them out of the application and if we get an exception anywhere in that code we will get this message error connecting to the database and i print out the error let's go ahead and run it and see what happens now i know i have two users let's try in something invalid first it says invalid username and a password. But I know I have one called afarhat and the password is Omar. And when I hit log in, notice the forms now are available. They were not available before. And the log out is highlight is enabled. Right? If I do log out. I need to log in again with the database username. And I have one called uh, Ahmad. And the username is ABC. And that works okay. Now I want to show you, I'll give you time to try it. Just give me a minute. I want to show you the last thing. Watch, yeah, Sabaya, watch. Look what's going to happen. I'm going to make an error in purpose in the connection string. Notice I have, this is my location, right? I'm going to change this to something else, C. But that instead of D, I put C. Notice what's going to happen now. If I go in here and run my application, do log in. When I try to log in, watch what happens. Error connecting to the database. So I got an exception. And here is my exception down below here. Got the idea? So I'll fix the error back. Just a second, just a second. I'll fix the error back. And this was a D. Okay. I'll stop this part and then we'll get the next part will be uh, how to get the use those user role and those things so we can enable based on the user role. Okay, um, stop.